The documentary excerpts you just saw are from one of the many inspiring documentaries in this series. Here are a few others, beginning with a group of teens in Georgia who donate part of their summer vacation to help take care of the environment. It's all part of a five-day summer program called Earth Tomorrow, which teaches kids to respect and take care of nature. They learn to monitor water quality and the health of streams, and they do community action projects like cleaning up creeks and restoring wildlife habitat. In addition to studying the animal life in the water, they learn to analyze the chemistry of the water itself. This is pretty bad. It's all types of glass, and you see like kids playing right over there. That's just scary. If you looked at Veronica last year, you would have thought she was the poster child for irresponsibility. She always seemed to be in trouble. I used to be real bad. I used to be real bad. And Veronica herself would be the first to admit that she was a bully. I just stayed home a lot and just thought of my future. Like I see people like in their future, like growing up and how they used to be, how I was, and then I didn't want to just end up like that. End up like dead or in jail or on the streets. Like, I don't know, we just suddenly just wanted to change, just do the right thing. So Veronica came to the realization that her life just was not working. She decided that she needed to reinvent herself. And she did that in the only way possible, by taking responsibility for all of her actions. So Veronica laid out a plan for herself. She decided to stay away from the wrong crowd, not to miss any classes, to read every day, to hand in all her homework on time, and to work out every day. To be really, really honest, the reason why I chose a different paths is because I knew how I was going to end up. To those kids that are not doing well, I guess that you just got to just do your own thing, have confidence in yourself, and don't be a follower. Don't follow what other people are doing, and just don't try to fit in and try to be something that you're not, and just look deep down your heart. Like, try to be something that you like to do. Nick Mejia is a normal, active 13-year-old boy who loves sports. But there's a difference between Nick and most boys his age. Nick has an artificial leg. One day when Nick was five years old, he was playing basketball with his brother, and he fell and hurt his knee. He didn't want to play the rest of the day. The next day, he landed on the same knee again. He couldn't even get up and walk, so his mom took him to the doctor. They x-rayed it and discovered bone cancer. They had no choice but to amputate his leg. But in spite of losing his leg, Nick is the kind of kid who will do just about anything he can to brighten another person's day. One of Nick's favorite activities is visiting cancer patients to keep them company and show them that there is life after cancer. And Nick always brings these patients gifts to cheer them up. The little pink bear. Thank you. She may feel alone, but that's how I was. When more people started taking care of me, I started to feel like I was somebody again, like I wasn't alone anymore. Nick combines his love of sports with helping others. He knows just because a person has had cancer doesn't mean he can't do the things he enjoys. Here, in preparation for a trip to the mountains, he teaches another amputee how to snowboard. When I see somebody smile, because I've helped them, I know I've made a little change in their life. Not a big change, but as long as it's a change, it still helps the person. 
In addition to these inspiring documentaries, there are many other delightful and stimulating elements in these programs that will engage your students. Here are some examples. So let me ask you this, what is a lie? A lot of times people just kind of avoid the truth and that to me kind of seems like lying. My kind of lie, what I look at a lie is when someone asks you directly and you don't answer truthfully. But like I know a lot of people think a lie is when you don't tell them anything, but that's not really a lie, that's just avoiding the answer. The biggest lie I've ever told is that I slept in my friend's house for like three days, but we really went out and like did whatever we want because no one was home. His parents were like away. The biggest lie I've ever told was probably, when, it was when I was a lot younger, and I told everybody that I had two older brothers, which I don't, um, because everybody, like everybody else I knew had an older sibling and I wanted to fit in. So I told everybody that I had older brothers named Richard and something else. I was desperate to fit in, and people would ask me like, how my brothers were. I'd be like, oh yeah, they're fine, you know? I, they're in high school or whatever. <laughs> when, what happened when people found out that I didn't actually have two older brothers was that they sort of, I mean, they laughed it off, and I tried to too, but after you've lied and somebody found you out, you, you kind of have a guilty feeling that you just carry around with you. I have once or twice lied to fit in. I was at my old school, rejected pretty much as a geek or a nerd because I didn't like what the other kids like. But in my old school, I did one or twice. I lied maybe about seeing a movie or having a pair of shoes or stupid things that don't really matter, I realize. But they almost, in a way, helped me feel like I wouldn't be targeted and pinned down and teased even more than I already was. When someone lies to be cool, you're gonna get found out because lying is not such an easy thing to do if you're trying to trick or deceive somebody. They're gonna find out, and with me, I'm not such a great liar, so they did find out, and uh, I'll just say that I didn't like the rest of that school year. I don't know. Lying can seem good at the time, but just, if you keep building up lies, then they are just, they're gonna topple over on you. A very smart philosopher once said, I'm not upset that you lied to me. I'm upset that from now on, I can't believe you. Have you ever had a day where you felt like you couldn't get any respect? Like somebody bumps into you in the hallway. And instead of a thoughtful excuse me, you get... Hey, watch where you're going, dude. Yeah, yeah boy. Yeah. And that's your best friend. Or maybe you're just eating your lunch and one of the cool kids comes up to you. Uh-oh. Nice shirt. Did you raid your mama's closet? <laughs> oh my god. Aren't you just so glad she noticed? So how does it make you feel to be treated that way? Angry? Sad? Hurt? Or maybe it just makes you feel like you don't want to have anything to do with anybody. Hi, honey. How do you treat people with respect? Definitely um, treat others the way you want to be treated because they're not going to treat you with respect if you don't treat them with respect. I think when, you know, just when you're walking, you have to respect people and know what's around you and not, you know, not be like, okay, I have to get through, I'm going to push you, you know? Like, just there's a certain extent of respect you have to have to, you know, just to walk around, you know? You know, everyone's always been a little disrespectful at least once in their life, usually thousands of times, and that's like the minimum, bare minimum. I mean, it's like something simple as seeing someone getting made fun of and not stopping it. Or everyone's at least said one hurtful word to someone. It's just that, you know, you, everyone has done that. So you can't say, oh, I've never been disrespectful. I've been completely respectful of everyone I know. Because that's just impossible. Okay, yesterday Aiden was backstage and he was 
you know, squirting everybody with a water bottle. So I tried to take it from him and I got pushed and the bottom of the water bottle cut this part of my hand and that really hurt. He said sorry, he was like, sorry, and he walked away and I couldn't believe it because I got hurt. I neglected to respect Vanessa, um, partly just because I was frustrated. It wasn't a great rehearsal, but that's not really an excuse. And I, I said I'm sorry, but I said it in like a nonchalant way and just kind of walked away. I didn't really feel like I was being respected, but earlier today he gave me a nice apology letter and that was respect.